Hello, Rock Church. Welcome to our core meeting. My name is Josh Whitney. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you being here. This is uh, our next topic, part eight of skill, family devotions. We thought this would be a timely message for us as a church right now. If you have kids or you don't have kids, this is a teaching for you. You could implement these ideas with a roommate or a spouse. This is just taking time weekly to grow in our faith with the people around us. Again, with our spouse, our children, our roommates, or even friends. Let's read the overview on the handout. A family devotion is a regular time when you focus on your relationship with God as a family. This usually involves reading, discussing, and responding to God's Word. Family devotions can also include many other experiences that will help your kids' relationship with God, family prayer, reading a Christian book, etc. Family devotions are a way that parents can pass on and teach the next generation the importance of God's Word. Fathers should take the primary leadership role in planning and leading this time. So let's get into the handout. What are some of the benefits of family devotion? A, it develops godly convictions and values. This is our mandate as parents. Look at Deuteronomy 6.6 6 on the back of your handout. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. So we see very clearly it is our biblical mandate to pass our faith on. Another benefit, B, it demonstrates the relevance of the Bible to everyday life. This is something I've talked about before. My parents did this very well growing up. As Christians, the Bible was just part of our life. At meals, running errands around the house, when we were in town, it was just weaved in and out of everything we were doing. And it is what Chris and I are striving to do with our family as well. Another benefit, C, demonstrates respect and appreciation for God's word. In other words, our children see, you know, mom and dad care enough to set a time, set aside time as a family to study and grow in God's word. And for the record, in my house, we have family game night. Recently, KSL had this whole big bracket of board games, and tragically, Risk was defeated by Monopoly, but Ticket to Ride defeated Monopoly. But we love to play board games as a family. In addition to that, we watch movies every week. Just family devotion is a time spent studying God and His Word, and it takes a variety of forms, which we will get into. Another benefit is it demonstrates the Father's leadership, like we talked about. Again, that Father should take this primary leadership role in leading this time. Men, if you are married, this is your baby. Get input from your wife. She has tremendous ideas. She has all these amazing thoughts on how to make it better. But lead out, men. And if you do not have a husband, women, God's grace is sufficient for you with your children. Another benefit, E, it identifies wrong behavior and attitudes. What am I talking about? You're trying to lead your family in a devotional time, and you got kids elbowing each other, or kids that aren't listening, or kids that are on their book or their device. People with bad attitudes. It's a chance to address and train in those opportunities. Another benefit, F, is that it identifies desirable character qualities. And then G, it leads to salvation. Look at this verse in 2 Timothy 3, 14 on the back of your handout. This is what the Apostle Paul wrote to his son in the faith, Timothy. 2 Timothy 3, 14. But as for you... Continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you have learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. In other words, Timothy was taught the Word of God by his mom and his grandma. There's no mention of his father in the verses that talk about him. So what are some suggestions for having quality family devotions? A, consistency is essential for overall effectiveness. It won't be easy. You need to put it in your schedule and pick a time that works best for your family. So I took a picture of a recent family devotion in our house. We usually do this on Saturday or Sunday morning. Right now it's both. We get our Bibles. The younger kids grab their picture Bibles or their action Bibles. The older kids grab their Bibles. I set a timer. We're all going to read whatever we want in the Bible for the next 15 minutes. And then when the timer goes off, everybody shares a verse and a thought. 
It's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. My kids are anywhere from 8 to 16 years old. And when they were younger, we did not do it this way. When they were younger, they just sat there and Krista and I would read to them from our picture Bible or the action Bible. A couple thoughts. Start slow. Don't overcommit. You're in it for the long run. Don't be the family that's like, we're going to start family devotions. We're going to do an hour twice a week. And then like you burn out a month later. Make it a normal part of your daily rhythm, your weekly rhythm and schedule. B, another tip, variety is essential. Pay attention to what your kids like, what engages them. C, make your devotions age appropriate. Rotate what age you focus on, especially if you have a range of children like I do. Sometimes the younger kids need to listen to the older kids. Sometimes the older kids need to listen to the younger kids. Two, picture Bibles, read aloud stories are great. Put actions to the verses. One suggestion for the older kids is have them read the proverb of the day. Get them their own Bible, a good Bible. Get them a journal. Have them read the proverb of the day and write down a verse. And I just want to say, get your kids good Bibles. We have all of these Bibles in our house. We've got the beginner Bible. We've got the action Bible. As they got older, we moved into Bibles that had a few Less pictures that had more words. We had the Jesus Storybook Bible. And as our kids have gotten older, we bought them a nice ESV or whatever translation you like, and we got their name printed on the front. Another idea for family devotions is to read appropriate Christian books and biographies. Here's a few that we have read over the last year. Pick books that will connect with your kids where they're at, that have great Christian themes and stories. We read an autobiography from an evangelist. We read an autobiography from a missionary. We've even read our kids a variety of Christian fiction as well. If you need some ideas on good Christian series and books, shoot me an email. I'll send you some that we have liked. There's some excellent family devotion books out there. Some families will all read the same section of the Bible and they will ask each other what they learn. That's a good idea. We've generally given our kids the freedom to pick the section of the Bible they wanted to read, though. I also work with my kids at the beginning of each year to help them develop a Bible reading plan. We have some excellent reading plans on the church's website. But make sure they have a plan each year, reading the Gospels, reading the New Testament, reading Proverbs and Psalms, reading the entire Bible. Another key thing is to review their Sunday school lessons or what they learned in church from the sermon. Driving back from church or at the meal after church or even right now when the streaming service ends, I ask them all, starting with the youngest, going to the oldest, what stood out to you? What did you learn in that? When you sit there, what did you learn in Sunday school this week? What was the lesson about or what stood out to you in the message today in church, son? We also need to make use of all the resources available to us now through Christian bookstores and websites and online resources. We live in a day and age when there are just a countless Christian resources that we can use. Here are some that we have used or come highly recommended. The Bible Project, Right Now Media, The Way of the Masters, an evangelism training tool. We've used all of these. There are some excellent documentaries like the Billy Graham story is a powerful story or is genesis history there's a number of great resources and you go josh that's a two-hour movie how do you do that in devotional we break it down into segments we might watch 20 minutes of the movie one night come back days later or a week later and watch another 15 20 minutes over the course of a few weeks we will make our way through a variety of good christian resources Here's how we usually do it in our house. One evening a week, we will sit and watch 20 minutes of some Christian movie or show. We'll read 20 minutes of some Christian book, and then we'll play a game. I want to make it fun and engaging for my family and kids. I want to highlight one, Is Genesis History? It's an hour and a half documentary. My wife got me for Christmas the 15 hours of bonus material that covers geology, paleontology, biology, chemistry, astronomy, all of these different subjects, looking for evidence of the Creator and the recent creation, it took my family an entire year. All of 2019, we moved about 15 minutes at a time through 15 hours of material. It was a tremendous resource for us as a family to work through. Participation is essential. D, on your outline, don't lecture, ask questions, draw your kids out. What did you learn, son? What stood out to you, 
Daughter, this is not the time for mom and dad to lecture on and on. This is the time to engage the children and get them talking about what they're learning. Keep things moving. Don't go too long. Keep it focused on a kid's attention span. Help your kids memorize the Word of God. I think of our Memory Madness program at church. It's a great tool to learn the Word of God. Establish traditions and holidays. And prayer time is critical. Have a family prayer list. Teach your kids how to pray at meals. Call on different kids and have them pray. You show them how to pray. Coach them in praying. Teach them how to pray. My friend John, he has a great habit with his family before they go to bed. He has his kids pray three things. One, he has them pray something they're thankful for. Two, he has them pray something in their own life they want to grow in. And three, he has them pray for something for someone else. I love that. What's a prayer of thanksgiving? What's a prayer for yourself? And what's a prayer for others? Another idea is sing together. If you don't play the piano or the guitar, you can find tremendous songs online, lyric videos, and you can sing together as a family. We've been doing this recently. It's been tremendous. You can break bread as a family. We've done that a few times. Be real. Share your life experiences and what's going on. In other words, mom and dad, when it's your turn to share your verse, Be real. Be authentic with your kids. This is something that dad has been thinking about. This is the word of God. This is how it relates to what dad is thinking about. So your kids see how you bring God's word to bear on what you're dealing with in your life. And then be spontaneous and open to God's spirit. Maybe there's a prayer request that you suddenly hear about. You gather your family. You just pray right there. Or maybe there's a topic that comes up or a need or something you need to address. Family huddle, everybody come here. We need to discuss this. So be spontaneous. God will lead even outside of our plan or routine. So in conclusion, as fathers, we are responsible to spiritually lead our families. God has commanded us to wash our wives with the word and bring our children up in the training and instruction of the Lord. One way we can accomplish this is by spending regular times together having family devotions. Amen. May God give us the grace to do this well. Take care.